And she has just become an expert on, on not only smart meters, but all of this EMF technology and what she calls silent weapons for quiet wars. And she has also become an amazing radio personality. She is uh, very popular and mainly, uh, which radio station was it? Well, I've been on the Power Hour. I have some new YouTubes up now, but I had my program on the Jeff Rince radio show for yes, over a year. And she before his I got her start with Dr. Stan Monteith, that many of you know, and he loved her. And, and she's spoken on all sorts of wonderful programs. So without further ado, let me welcome Deborah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have to say it's with great sorrow and sadness that I'm going to be talking to you tonight. And I can say that what we face is more than we ever thought. And I want to just go into some fire conversation right now. Angela, you did a wonderful job on your presentation, but I want to tell you a little bit more about what's happening. Uh, we drove through Coffee Park. Um, as they've started to remove the demolition of all the concrete and footings. And there are large scoop outs on the ground. Many of you can drive through that now and see that. And the first rain or so that occurred a week or so after the fires filled up those ponds. So we went to the Marin Sonoma Vector Control meeting to find out about what will happen with mosquitoes this season. There is an alert because there is early larva production because of the heat. And they are extremely concerned about West Nile virus. And we have divots all over the county. Now West Nile is weaponized. It is a weaponized disease. Mosquitoes, it's weaponized, just like Lyme disease. Lyme disease was weaponized on Plum Island when we brought back scientists after World War II in Project Paperclip. So we are being set up on by many assaults. So not just the directed energy weapons and likely the smart meters were involved in the fires as well. Because we know that they blow up. We know that they send pulsed frequencies. You can go online and you can look at all the homes that have been burned up from the deployment. Deployment. Deployment is a military term for d inserting equipment for a plan. Now, I have to tell you, Orlean and I, a uh, few years ago, happened to have a proxy for the PG&E annual shareholders meeting. And while we were down there sitting in the audience, they were introducing some of the higher ups in the first few rows and I heard the name Rothschild. And I elbowed Orlean and I said, did you hear that, Rothschild? So I went back and I did some research. Rothschild is in charge of all of the utilities across the country, Rothschild. And it is a nefarious plan. And we face many, many things, not only the deployment of the smart meters for causing directed energy weapon attacks in our homes from the frequencies, and all of the uh, dirty electricity that's coming in on our house lines, really literally traveling through, through the walls, going into under wire bras, wire box spring mattresses, money in your pocket, belt buckles, you name it. We're being irradiated. This is a plan. This is all part of the genocide plan. So here in Sonoma County, what we also discovered was what they're doing with the um, material that they're taking away from all the burned areas. We followed some of the dump trucks, and we actually talked to some of the dump truck drivers. They were parking their dump trucks in the uh, Home Depot, Depot parking lot and then walking over to the hotel. And what we discovered was we were told that they're bringing, taking, carting away all of the rebel from the concrete, the footings, the foundations. They're scooping that up and they're taking that to the rock quarries. There are several rock quarries nearby. 
that material is going to be reused, recycled, and brought back into our community. The concern with this reused material is that it will not have the same tolerances that it had before it was burned so ferociously with directed energy weapons. So how do we know they're directed energy weapons? They're using them globally all over the world on villages and people. This is not a unique situation here. We're not a test case. We're just part of the global community of heavy assaults with the weaponized reality that we live in, sadly. Other parts of our country are experiencing different kinds of weaponized weather assaults. Tornadoes, floods, rains. It's massive. We got hit and we know it now. It's different when you hear on the news that someone else is swimming out of their home, surrounded by snakes. It's different when you're getting up yourselves at one or two in the morning. We were heavily also heavily geoengineered prior to the fires and the weeks or so after the fires to hold down all the heavy toxins that were in the environment so we would bathe in those toxins. People were having bloody noses, throwing up blood. Was that ever reported? Did you ever hear about those health effects from the fire victims? You didn't, and you won't. So we look at what is occurring with the refuge and the idea that we would be a Superfund site. And of course, Superfund sites are a way in which they steal money. They get millions and millions of dollars to clean up toxic, to toxic areas like at military bases, and they never clean the sites up. The money disappears. So this leads me to something that's very important that I want to talk about that's happening right here in River City right now. Um, I just also wanted to add that during the fire meetings, uh, there were people that went to the vets building that had lost their homes. And that entire setup for the meetings for all these victims was the Delphi technique. So what do I mean by that? There were hundreds of people that were literally suffering from shock, literally from shock. And they had to line up in lines of hundreds of people to get to one guy at a table for, let's say, the US Car Army Corps of Engineer or the EPA if they had specific questions rather than having a panel in the front and everybody could hear the questions they divided it up it's the way in which they control the conversation and they divide people up so people aren't talking to one another either and it was heartbreaking to see the disaster that had just happened that was a hit on our area and see the people so abused with the techniques that roll th through our cities all the time but I want to also say this. Many of you may have seen this. This came out just after the fires. Okay? It says, Climate changed. Global warming presents a new era of fire danger. So they're telling us we're going to have a lot more directed energy hits. They're telling us that. And we know that. Okay? They say in here, that's the way it is with warming climate, dry weather, reduced moisture, said Governor Jerry Brown in a press conference last week. These kinds of catastrophic, catastrophic events have happened and they are going to continue to happen. So you've been warned. You've been warned. This is a warning. They know the kinds of weapons that are being used, okay? Now I'm gonna jump into this. <laughs> this is called the NASA War Plan. For those of you that go to stopthecrime.net, I would urge you to take a look at the NASA War Plan. Because it is a plan using silent weapons against all of us for mass genocide and control of all clothing, vitamins, food, housing, globally and of all people, of all people. It is a fingerprintless plan. It is a silent weapons plan. 
And I want to tell you what it says here, because we're going to be faced with this. Hopefully this won't go down on me. This is a heavy plan <laughs> in many ways. Um, on page 82 of the NASA war plan, it says that they'll have nuke deliveries. They'll sink ships off, full, off the, the shoreline, detonate and produce tidal waves and radioactive plumes. They'll have ganged micro ro rockets. They'll Trojan horse everything. Ships, boats, planes, cars, trucks, packages, cargo, and containers. The targeted effects include tidal waves, electric EM EMPs, that's an electric pulse, uh, earthquakes, earthquakes, and radiation blasts. On page 90, they talk about chaos and Trojan horse everything and the use of fry microwave lasers and they'll blow things up. So it's important to understand that the Air Force has the capacity to silently and quickly sabotage the enemy systems without raising alarm, an option afforded by the silent weapons system without raising alarm, lasers and the weather weapons that are being used against us. What I want to tell you about the earthquakes is this. It is heavy. <laughs> it is heavy. Um, we own property in Southern California, and about five years ago, State Farm canceled the earthquake policy that we had on some multifamily dwellings. And I felt right then that they were getting out of the market because they know there's going to be an earthquake because they can create and do create earthquakes with Tesla technology. That's what we're seeing happening all over the world. So we got canceled. And then I've just received this request, action requested, important information to update or consider with our policy. And it says, most Californians live within 30 miles of an active earthquake fault. Your earthquake risk is real, so is the benefit of earthquake coverage. Everything that is being done to us is market driven. It's all for profit and money by those few that are controlling global assets. And they control our local cities as well. I could go on and on with this NASA document. I could tell you more. And they're using towers for mind control. Mind control. And that leads me in to what's going to be happening here next. I have many radio shows that I've done deep, deeper conversations on um, the NASA war document. So I'd urge you to go to StopTheCrime.net or just type in YouTube, the NASA war plan, and you'll hear many conversations more in depth about that plan. It's consuming. It's a consuming plan. And it was put together by our military and by the corporate structure that runs America. Sadly, we are not the country that we have been fooled into believing that we are. And I'm actually going to read this to you. Um, this is James Traficant. He is a patriot, and he was a congressman. He was in falsely prisoned and served seven years and was nearly killed while he was in prison. He was known as being America's last Minute Man. This is his book. And I'm going to read to you what he said on the floor and got into the record. And this is critical because this is what we face. And this is what we have. The bankruptcy of the United States. And this went into record March 17th of 1993. But we were bankrupted during the Civil War and certainly in 1933. When we were collateralized against the debt, our birth certificates were collateralized against the debt, and all land and property was collateralized against the debt. 
we effectively own nothing and we are sharecroppers on the land. This is why we're seeing land grabs. This is what we saw at the Bundy Ranch. We were up there covering the Bundy Ranch and it is a massive land grab under UN Agenda 21. And Clark County, where that ranch is, has signed on and is abiding to the climate action plans in UN Agenda 21. Just as all of our cities and counties across the country and other countries have signed on to this. There's really nowhere that I have not found a climate action plan. The bankruptcy of the United States. Mr. Speaker, we are here now in Chapter 11. Members of Congress are official trustees presiding over the greatest reorganization of any bankrupt entity in the history, the U.S. government. We are setting forth, hopefully, a blueprint for our future. There are some who say it is a coroner's report that will lead to our demise. It is an established fact that the United States federal government had been dissolved by the Emergency Banking Act of March 9, 1933, declared by President Roosevelt being bankrupt and insolvent. It goes on to say that the um, joint resolution to suspend the gold standard and aggravate, aggravate the gold clause dissolved the sovereign authority of the United States and the official capacities of all United States governmental offices, officers, and departments and it's further evidence that the United States federal government exists today in name only. The receivers of the United States bankruptcy are the international bankers via the United Nations, the World Bank, and the International Monetary Fund. All United States offices, officials, and departments are now operating within a de facto status in name only under emergency war powers. The federal government exists in name only. We do not have the representative government that we have been psychologically programmed to believe that we have. And our children are learning the same thing we learned. And this is very, very dangerous. Our educational system is extremely dangerous. Um, I'm going to read a few things. And this may be rather startling as well. First, I, I just want to say that CAL FIRE has been tasked here in Sonoma County to come up with the cause of the fire. It's important to understand that CAL FIRE has signed on to UN Agenda 21 policies. You will never hear about directed energy weapons. You will never hear about the smart meters effect on these fires. You will never hear that. Never. Now we have a YouTube up and it's called The Plan to Burn Up Northern California. This was put on the internet two and a half years ago when I was on the program with Jeff Rents just after the assassination attempt on his life. And um, what this is, the plan that I discussed, it's actually two plans. The first plan has now occurred here in Sonoma County and of course in Southern California as well. Where a re our research team found two documents out of the California Public Utility Commission and Pacific Gas and Electric when they were being sued for spying on those people that were effectively breaking out the news across the country about the smart meters. There was a tremendous amount of spying by Pacific Gas and Electric. And I'll never forget the morning that the Chronicle called me and said, Deborah, how does it feel being spied on by Pacific Gas and Electric? And I said, I don't know what you're talking about. They said, well, your name is in the documents. I said, well, they spy on us with the smart meters. They've deployed something against our will that's dangerous. How could I expect that they wouldn't be spying? And then there was a, a smart meter expert, the, the actual executive of PG&E, who tried to get into our Google group for the anti-smart meter movement, and he was caught falsifying his name and subsequently fired. And the reason I'm telling you this 
is that when we discovered that Rothschild is running Pacific Gas and Electric in Southern California, Edison, we then understood what was happening. This is another reason why in the silent web, in the document, the NASA war plan that I just showed you, there are eight references to an EMP, an electromagnetic pulse, as what they're going to do. Has anyone ever wondered why we have not hardened up our electrical grid? People have been talking since 2002 to harden up the electrical grid in the United States. They've hardened up the electrical grid in Russia and in China, and they've done a fairly good job in Canada. Nothing in the United States. Why? Because the utilities, of which there are thousands across the country, are run by Rothschild, and the lobbyists do not want the grid hardened. This is all part of a silent weapons takedown. As Angela referred, this is wealth redistribution. This is collapsing our society as we have known it, and this is eliminating the haves and have-nots. I'm going to jump into a number of, of different topics, but I also want to say that they've hired the criminals to, uh, to literally be involved in the rebuild of Santa Rosa. What do I mean by that? James Witt, he comes, he's a former FEMA guy, and he, um, he came out of the Clinton era as the Federal Emergency Management Agency Administrator. He's here in town. He's tapped in October to lead the fire recovery nonprofit Rebuild the North Bay. He headed FEMA in the 1990s, but more recently founded a corporation called EB5 Global Management, LLC, which seeks to capitalize on a controversial U.S. law that grants fast-track permanent resident status to foreign nationals in exchange for large investments in this area. They can take, uh, they will ha um, take five million and of course above and guarantee citizenship and 10 jobs. They're harmonizing the rebuild. They're moving in and creating a different society here in Sonoma County. That's what's behind this. And so, but we have many behind the scenes. I want to talk about this because like you, I've wondered how on earth is all of this being funded? How can they spray us every day overhead with the jets, cause fires, cause global weather upheaval, and pay for all of this? Well, one of the ways is the CAFR. Maybe many of you have heard about the CAFR. It's a comprehensive annual financial report that each incorporated city, each incorporated city and each incorporated county, they're all doing business. They are incorporated. They do not work for you. You think you vote these people in. You do not. They run the Delphi technique. They have policies in place that are predetermined. This is all over the country. This is all over the country. It's not just here in Sonoma County. The CAFR report is important to understand, and I would recommend that everybody check out some videos. Um, actually, a friend of ours did an excellent uh, video. Uh, his name is Jerry Day, and he explains the CAFR in the most logical terms that I've heard. But the bottom line for the CAFR is uh, it's a deliberate and massive swindle that is perpetrated by every government agency from your local school district all the way up to the federal government. So all of the agencies, we're talking the public health departments, we're talking about all the agencies. They are all agencies of a corporate government setup and they are stealing money. They're doing a double bookkeeping. Any of you that are accountants, you'll be loving to di dive into this CAFR. It's a big plot. To, spiel, to steal all of our public funds. As soon as our revenue goes into government, they skim off millions and trillions of dollars and they put it in the corporate funding on the New York Stock Exchange. It is an enormous money laundering scheme to, to finance the takedown of all of us. They offshore our jobs. They're, they're reducing America into 
uh, literally being taken over by robots. How many of you have heard about all the robots? Okay. Last night on Coast to Coast. Okay. We're going to talk a little bit about that too. Because in the NASA war document, they tell us this. You can download this from StopTheCrime.net as part of the NASA war document. This is just a collection of some of the pages, but they say this. The presentation is based in all cases upon existing data, trends, analysis, technologies, no pixie dust. This is about robots, cyborgs, and humans. We're in a transhumanization period of time. This is why the massive genocide. This was put together by the U.S. Air Force, DARPA, the CIA, the FBI, Southern Command, Atlantic Command, the Australian Department of Defense, and many others. This is a global plan. This is what they said, and when I was looking for this and found this about five years ago, I was horrified. Because I didn't think, when I saw this, that this was anything relevant. It just said circa 2025 future war and I thought well I'll just scan it and see what it looks like and I came upon interestingly enough page 66 that was the first page I hit when I opened up this document and here's what it said increasingly critical are human limitations and human downsides humans are too large humans are too heavy humans are too tender humans are too slow physically and mentally we require huge cost and humans have rapidly to decreasing negative value. They are replacing us. We went to a, a meeting down at the D Dominican College a few years ago, and um, I found this information that I would like to read that is unthinkable. It talks about the changes that we're going to experience. And um, while I'm hunting for that, I'm going to tell you about this because we're in a war of frequencies. We're in an amped up world of frequencies that we can physically, we, we can't survive. 5G is coming in. We did a YouTube. I would recommend everybody take a look at it. Lou and I went to an IEEE meeting in San Jose a few years ago. We paid a lot of money to attend. They tried to steal his camera. They had him backed up against the wall, and we were able to convince them that we weren't going give to give them the camera, but instead we got a letter from their Park Avenue New York law firm saying if we used any footage of the filming there, they would sue us. So what we did was we took copious notes, and it's up on YouTube. It's called IEEE, Technology Future Death Trap. Again, IEEE, I-E-E-E, -E -E, Technology Future Death Trap, Deborah Tavares. IEEE stands for Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers, and they meet globally all over the world, and they design your future. And it is all done on the Delphi technique. Those engineers that were at these meetings from all over the world were put at tables with the easels and were asked questions. These people really, engineers, don't know how they're being led into the demise of the plans that they are creating. And it was surreal to see the Delphi technique being orchestrated every single place we went. But I want to talk to you about what I just found on the IEEE website about 5G, and 5G is coming. And that's why I have the YouTube, the, ki the Cooking of Humanity. I would certainly ask all of you to take a look at the Cooking of Humanity. And um, in order to understand what the Cooking of Humanity is, uh, Lou and I flew up to Portland, Oregon a few years ago to interview Barry Trower. He's considered a foremost expert globally on weaponized warfare. And we went up there so that we could interview him. I'm going to read a few things that he tells us. 
and then I'd certainly urge you to all look at the YouTube, The Cooking of Humanity. In every year since the 1960s, I trained the government microwave warfare establishment. I looked at all aspects of microwave warfare. I had a lot of expertise in the microwave field, and I was asked if I would carry on with this research. He said, we are in a new Cold War, and this is why countries all over the world are developing microwave weapons. He says, I really mean they are developing microwave weapons. And this is why all the microwave transmitters are going up everywhere. Because somebody, if they wanted to, could use them for other effects. And they are. They're doing that now. The system is up and running. Years ago, our government said to its scientists, when it comes to microwaves, you will only talk about things to do with heat. That's it. Only to talk about heat. So they won't even discuss anything else other than heat. They will deny anything that doesn't have anything to do with heat. They even deny all their 40 years of research leading up to this, although they've said that this heat can cause cancer and all the damage. They say, no, it can't. We're only looking at heat, and that's all that matters is heat. So, he said, for the last 40 years, the English government has been lying to the people, and the American, Canadian, and Australian governments and other global governments have been lying to its people. They have been lying to protect industry and to protect their profits. So they are really not, they're really liars, and it's provable, sanctioned by the World Health Organization. Without a shadow of a doubt, it is the same people that sit on the ICNAP certificate they sit on our government's health protection agencies, and they sit on the World Health Organization. It's all the same people. There are probably no more than 20 people that control everything. But yes, they're going to, in my opinion, commit the worst genocide this planet has ever known. Not just people, but animals and plants. They are probably going to use more destruction and cause more destruction than a global war. And in several hundred years' time, people will look back, whoever is able to survive, and look at what we tried to do to stop them. That's why we're working hard to get this information out, because we're being now rolled over by 5G. And this is off the IEEE website. It's everything you need to know about 5G. And this is how they sell it. Today's mobile users want faster data speeds and more reliable service. The next generation of wireless networks, 5G, promises to deliver just that and so much more. The 5G users should be able to download a high definition film in under a second, a task that takes 10 minutes on 4G now. And wireless engineers say these networks will boost the development of other <coughs> new technologies too such as autonomous vehicles, virtual reality, and the Internet of Things. If all goes well, the telecommunication companies hope to debut this new commercial 5G network in the early 2020s. But right now, the 5G is st still in the planning stages. It's not. They're getting ready to roll it out. They tell us that Companies and industry groups are working together to figure out exactly what it will look like. But we all agree on one matter. As the number of mobile users and their demand for data rises, 5G must handle far more traffic at much higher speeds than the base stations that make up today's cellular networks. To achieve this, the engineers are going to be designing a suite of brand new technologies. And together, these technologies will deliver data with less than a million millisecond of delay compared to about 70 milliseconds today. They go on to tell us that today's wireless networks have to run and they've run into a problem because many people and devices are consuming more data than ever before, but it remains crammed on the same band as the radio frequency spectrum. One way to get around that problem is to simply transmit signals in a whole new swath of spectrum, one that has never been used before by mobile services. 
That's why providers are experimenting with broadband broadcasting, which uses higher frequencies than the radio waves that have long since been used. They go on to say, until now, the operators of satellites and radar stations use these waves for real-world applications, and by using millimeter waves to connect mobile users with nearby base stations, it, this is an entirely new approach. Remember, these are military frequencies. These are not frequencies that we can survive in. They say there is a major down, a major drawback to millimeter waves, though. They can't really travel through buildings or obstacles and can be absorbed by foliage and rain. Remember that. These waves can be absorbed by foliage and rain. What are we being told to do? We're in a, a, a drought. We are being told we have a water shortage. Eliminate your foliage. Okay, PG&E, the reason that I believe that PG&E is allowing the explanation that they've put out that some of the fires were indeed caused by their lack of trimming the foliage, they've admitted this. You have to wonder why would Rothschild lead these law lawsuits in that direction for several reasons. First of all, he doesn't want to be caught controlling the weather, which he owns Weather Central, and Rothschild has pulled weather permits, cloud seeding, all over Northern California. You can look that up yourself. In fact, in the YouTube, the plan to burn up Northern California, you will see those permits and that information. <coughs> so it can't go through foliage. Um, another thing too, this is radically a different network structure and should provide more targeted and effective use of the spectrum. They're going to be implementing and deploying small cells. They are portable and miniature base stations and they are going to be placed about 850 feet apart throughout all of our cities. 850 feet apart in all of our cities to prevent the signals from being dropped so we don't complain about dropped calls. They go on to say that the carriers will install thousands of these stations in every city to form a dense network that acts like a relay team receiving signals from other base stations and sending data to users at any location. While traditional cell networks have also come to rely on increasing number of base stations, achieving 5G performance will require an even greater infrastructure. And luckily, these antennas on small cells can be much smaller than traditional antennas. If they are transmitting tiny millimeters, the size difference makes it easier to stick on cell towers, light poles, and atop buildings. This is the 5G. This is what's coming in. I will. Um, I'm just going to talk about one more thing. And I'll just breach it, just discuss it slightly, because I think it is so, so critical. It's the new um, biometric ID. It's um, ID 2020. And it is a global plan of biometrically implanting every single person on the planet. Now, when we attended the IEEE meeting that I was telling you about, we were told during that meeting that every single thing on the planet, manufactured goods, as well as animals, plants, and people would all be tagged with ID chips. It would trace the beginning of the manufacturing to end use. In the um, biometric implanting that they're starting now, it is going to track birth to death of all people globally. Bill and Melinda Gates are backing it because they will require our national ID cards to show that we've been vaccinated. They're telling us that we need these cards because it's dangerous to be invisible. You could be scooped up in some kind of trafficking event. We're being trafficked right now. And so they're telling us this is a good thing to do because with these cards we can vote. There is no such thing as voting. 
we don't have a government that we are voting in. When we went to Washington, D.C., Lou and I, with Eagle Forum a few years ago, we passed out smart meter information and the weather modification information. We walked for days to all of the congressional buildings and offices. We even went to the Department of Energy and gave information to John Upton, who was the director at the par Department of Energy at the time. It was silent. It was as though we were never there. They are crisis actors. These are political actors. They don't serve us. They run around taking money, defrauding us, working with the international bankers and funneling money out of every single city and county nationwide through CAFR. And I cannot tell you how corrupt, how black and horrible this is for all of us. And I want to end with this. Just because many of you may or may not know about this situation and you need to if you don't. There is what is called now a global community of targeted individuals. It's a deep black state targeting controlled ground network and satellite based network and also directed energy weapons that aim and direct frequencies and terrorize millions of people not only in the United States but abroad. So I want you to all type in targeted individuals. If you've never heard of it before, you need to know. I know many targeted individuals that are hit with directed energy weapons and their lives are unmanageably torturous and cruel. They can now, uh, really they can control your brain. This is what it's all about. They're feeding these people in to the hive mind. It's a hive mind. It's a one world government. It's a one world bank. It's a one world religion. And it's a one world brain. That's where we are going. So to end it on a bit of a happier note, <laughs> um, because I will tell you, uh, we do have to have and find our faith. and We do have to pray. And we do have to live one day at a time. We have to find love and joy as best we can in this world of increasingly darkness that we see mounting all around us. We have to come together in groups like this so we can support one another with the things that we're finding. I can tell you that I just got back on the radio last week. I was gone with, for two and a half years because we were so heavily targeted. We were so heavily targeted. My family has been very heavily targeted. Now, I won't go into the detail of that, but I want you to understand what targeting is by doing some research yourselves. In asking these targeted individuals how we can best help them, they say, understand this is real. Understand that the people that are hearing voices in their head, and we're thinking that they're nuts, and they should go into a mental hospital and be psychologically traumatized with, with um, drugs and detained because they're classified as mentally ill. Most of them are not. They're targeted. And they're driving around from city to city living in vans because they can't rent. They can't hold a job. When anyone does a rental application for these people, it will come up that they're on a special list and they're not to be given any rental housing. This is huge, this is real, and this is increasingly happening to more and more people. We are all going to be targeted. We are already being targeted. Look at the disinfo information that we've already been led to believe. Look at the lies that we believe. And I will end on this. The speech from John F. Kennedy. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies on covert means for expanding its sphere of influence on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice, on guerrillas by night, fires, directed energy weapons at night, okay? instead of invasion, on subversion, instead of elections, 
on intimidation instead of free choice, on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. It is a system that has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit and highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. He warned us. We were warned. We didn't understand what this meant. And the enormity that we are in, literally, we are in some of the final hours. So thank you very, very much.